بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم peace be upon you this is Hala Waidat Egypt and my paper or the title of my paper is the Nile and the Egyptian revolutions ecology and culture in the 20th and 20th century Arabic poetry in fact my paper focuses on the main theme of this conference the last 30 years have been the worst that the River Nile has ever faced in history. Of course, when I say in history, that is the Nile is as old as history itself. And when I give the reasons for this, I will just give you some reasons. One, the industrial activities. Two, the economic expansion, pollution, population growth, and more important, the destructive policies of the governments of the regime of the former president, Hosni Mubarak. Yeah. Now, when you ask me why did the people have the 2011 revolution, I would simply say not just to get rid of the, the regime and the president and all the, and the oppression and to get their freedom and independence and whatever, you know. I would just say, for me, it is to gain the Nile back. This Nile, which runs in my blood and in every Egyptian's blood, well, it lost its pride, its purity, its cleanness, even the look it used to have when I was a young girl. And I said in my paper that I chose that topic because I have personal reasons. I grew up in a city which is called Mansoura, which is just near the river banks. The Nile for me is what? My life, my whole life. So. Uh, Please let me uh, just say very briefly that uh, I'm taking this subject of the Nile, not just a topic for my own paper, it has got to be what all Egyptians should live for today. If we gain it back, a pure Nile, a clean Nile, if we just can think of ourselves as belonging to that Nile, Egypt will gain back its own civilization, its own great civilization. You know that Egyptians, all Egyptians, in fact, are so proud of their ancient civilization. Anyway, I would like to introduce something which is the main concern of my study. That is to introduce that profound connection of, one, the ecological changes on the River Nile in the 20th century, and the culture of the Egyptian society, in fact, when I say culture here, I would just also say that politics is included, that is reflected in the Arabic poetry during this period. Now, I, um, I had to, uh, to use that historical approach uh, in order to examine this connection during the times of the major three revolutions in the 20th century. The first one, 1919, the second one, 1952, and the third one, or the last one, that is the, the beginning of the 21st century, the 2011. In fact, the Nile, or uh, when I say the Nile, I have to start historically with ancient Egyptians. In order to understand that relationship between Egyptians and the Nile, I have to start with ancient Egyptians, who offered their reverence to the river Nile for the immense impact it held over their existence. Ancient Egyptians, in fact, were able to find the grounds upon which the two communities, that is the human and the natural, can coexist, cooperate, and flourish in the biosphere. Now, when I say this one, this sentence, in fact, I have to remind you that Egyptians considered the Nile a god, it's sacred, and all other uh, elements of the environment were also sacred. The sun was a god, some animals, some birds, plants. Well, we have something here, something that we don't have in the 20th or the 21st century. We don't have a civilization in which environment is an element. It is the environment that had all that civilization as one element man and his civilization as one element in that environment. So we will read together a few lines from Hyman to the Nile uh, so we can appreciate how did they, um, how did they deal and love and uh, consider that river a sacred one. Hail to, thee, hail to thee, O Nile, who manifest thyself over this land 
and comes to give life to Egypt. Mysterious is thy issuing forth from the darkness on this day, whereupon it is celebrated. Now, do we think that, uh, do you think that uh, the, the Nile was uh, polluted in the ancient Egyptian times? No, it was pollution free. Why? It is not because of the government or anything else. It was because of one thing, the common man. The common man believed that he cannot pass through the gate to eternity, to the other world, unless he has a certificate that's telling what? He never polluted the Nile, not even once in his lifetime. So the Nile is not just a god and sacred and and, no. He has got commitment to that environment, to that Nile. So uh, the ancient Egyptian civilization then emerges from the environmental awareness and the advanced practices and behaviors of the common man to maintain ecological balance. That led to his involvement in the ecosystem and environmental issues. Now, I would like you to uh, just look at that, um, at the PowerPoint presentation in which you will find a pyramid that I have here for any country, any time in history. What do we have? Top, it might be king and government. In the hierarchy that we had in literature, we will have God, angels, king, and then man, and then uh, uh, animals, and then plants, and inanimate, and, and so on. But in Egypt, ancient Egypt, the case was different. Number one, it is not that shape of the triangle that we have here. It is a circle or whatsoever you can call it. Uh, it's just the whole environment. And man is just something. He is not over or above or the controller or whatsoever. No. He is just one thing, a thing. Just like animals, plants, all other elements, all other uh, non-human world that existed. So we will have at the top, of course, that's the Nile, the whole environment, the sun, the plants, the animals, everything in the environment. And then, the, of course, the rule of the pharaoh. And then we will have the scientists and the intellectuals, um, science, uh, reading and writing, all these um, very intellectual matters were very much respected in ancient Egypt. And all these things, plus the common man, they all constitute one unit. So man is just an element of that environment that surrounds him. Now, uh, I'll read a few lines about what did the Nile represent for the Egyptians. Uh, I'm quoting, the Egyptians rightly termed it as the river of life. The Nile has always been the backbone of Egypt. Another quote, the Egyptians believed that the Nile was the center of the world and it was the source from which it originated, the source, sorry, from which it originated was the beginning of the world. Now I'm moving to the 20th century. Uh, let me just repeat or let us just read some words and phrases that were said about uh, the, that relationship between ancient Egyptians and the Nile. Uh, the Egyptians rightly termed it as the river of life. The Nile has always been the backbone of Egypt. Egyptians believed that the Nile was the center of the world. The source from which it originated was the beginning of the world. Now that was for good. Let me now start uh, focusing on the, the, the main theme of the, the paper that is the 20th century. And I will start with the first revolution, 1919 revolution, or the Peasants' Revolution, led by Saad Zaghloul and his political party, Waft. And uh, the main uh, requests and the main, uh, let us say, achievements of, the, uh, of that revolution was that people, people, I'm not saying uh, the government, no, because all the people of Egypt, even though um, those were peasants, they revolted against the policies uh, in Egypt and uh, the British occupation. They succeeded in issuing the 1923 uh, constitution that was based on a parliamentary representative system. And Saad Zaghloul became the first popularly elected prime minister of Egypt. 
let me now move very quickly to the poetry of that period in which we will see the image of the Nile and the, the concepts, uh, the, the, the culture of the people itself reflected in that poetry. We will find that the poet laureate Ahmad Shawki, he would give poems and poems uh, on the Nile, the, the, um, how much respect and love do the people have for the Nile. Another poet that is Hafiz Ibrahim, he's called the poet of the Nile and so on. But the, the, the main point about this is that during that period that led to the revolution of the 1919, we will find that Ahmed Shawki writes, um, he wrote, sorry, the, uh, the poem, The Nile, and in that poem he glorified the river and gave it a vivid description of what? Of its purity, cleanness, of the, the, the image that is related to uh, the people, the culture, politics, everything related to that purity of the Nile. I will just read to the, 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 the very few lines from that poem. The pure Nile is a river from heavens. In Arabic it is called al kawthar Paradise is its green banks. So if it is paradise, what more does a human being need? Uh, even the flood itself was praised. In spite of the fact that it used uh, to cause damage, uh, a lot of damage to the country, but even that flood was praised in poetry. Did you come from the heavens or sprang as streams from paradise? Ages passed and you never change. You feed and water, yet neither your pot nor your table is empty. You pour water that formulates gold. You flood the land, long live the flooded. So. Now, when we come to, were there any ecological problems related to pollution? Yes, there were. Yet, they were not that immense or that huge to the extent that they would uh, just cause people to hate the Nile or uh, say anything about it. So, we will find that the main problem at the time was the fishing industry. And it, it had a very, uh, it has a, an impact, a, in fact, heavily impacted the river. Uh, when a, a certain type of fish, what, that is the, the perch, the Nile perch, was introduced to the river. And then another problem was pollution of the drinking water because people at that time used to drink from uh, the Nile, directly from the Nile. And we have also uh, certain dams that caused, uh, uh, that caused certain problems in the Nile, like the Aswan Dam, but it was not, it was not to the extent that people would believe anything rather than what they have always believed in from ancient Egyptian times up to the beginning of the 20th century. In the middle of the century, that is 1952, that is the second revolution. This was not the people's revolution, it was the army's revolution. I'm not going to use any other words, in fact, just a revolution led by the army and then supported by the people. We will find that the 2011, the case was uh, vice versa, we have the people started the revolution and then the army supported the people. Now, the main thing about the revolution, the 1952, it was against the king, but we notice that this is, uh, this is the first time, in fact, that we find that the king uh, is attacked and the corruption of the king is attacked by the, the army and the people. In the previous ages, we will notice that the king was all the time respected Nothing about monarchy, everybody, Saad in 1919, other people coming after that, nobody speaking about uh, getting rid of that uh, king, no. He was, in fact, respected. Um, with King Farouk, the army um, was against his corruption, and the whole system of the country changed. It became the Arab Republic of Egypt. And we will notice that there was a, a main character um, in that uh, revolution, that is Gamal Abdel Nasser led the people to so many achievements. But uh, when we talk about the cultural conditions, we will notice that before and after the revolution, there were still poetry that praised the Nile, poetry or Arabic poetry that, um, let us say, uh, respected, loved, glorified the Nile, exactly like what happened in all the previous ages. This means that up to the 60s, and even the 70s, the image of the Nile was the same image that we had, or we as Egyptians, of course, inherited from ancient Egyptians. 
Uh, let me just give one example of the poetry of that time, that is A Song for the Nile by Mahmoud Ismail, in which he expresses his deep love and sense of pride of the river and belonging to Egypt. Let me just read um, a line or two, then hail the heart of existence and the fascination of the universe, O Nile, the son of eternity, the wine of the pharaoh, hail heart of existence, my ancestors' home. What I'm concentrating on is that sense of pride that Egyptians used to have, yes? Um, in fact, uh, uh, the, the Nile kept that image up to the last 30 um, dark years that I would call dark years of Egypt. Uh, in his poem, The Pharaoh uh, Addresses the Egyptians, we will find that Mahmoud Ismail points out that even the highest political authority in ancient Egypt respected the Nile. Being deprived from the river remained the severest punishment for an uh, idle or indifferent man or uh, for mankind. Do not touch the Nile if you do not work hard. Its pure water is not created for the lazy. Exert efforts everywhere in the galaxy or find another river to satisfy the thirsty. So working hard, that was the most important thing that Egyptians did and have been doing all, their, uh, all through history, in fact, their history. But now we will face the problems and the risks facing the Nile ecosystem after building the high dam. After building the high dam that is in the 1960, the risks faced by the Nile ecosystem were those related to various types of pollution. Let me mention just three of them, that is sewage uh, dumped into the river, of course, Two industrial establish, uh, establishments do not follow the low draining uh, untreated wa wastewater into the river or even injecting it into the groundwater. The third one, the, use, uh, the usage of uh, pesticides and fertilizers, and it also polluted the river. Now, still, most of the river's water is considered fairly clean and with only few black zones, efforts to reduce the number of uh, pollutants entering the river are in fact underway. Now, when we come to the last 30, I call them dark years of Egypt, we will find that the river witnessed um, a serious change, not just the river. That change happened in all aspects of life in Egypt. Environmentally, both human and natural impacts altered the Nile and Egypt. This change was mirrored in the poetry of the contemporary period. In fact, uh, when I just come to some of the poets who ex uh, expressed uh, that impact of pollution and of the, um, uh, let us say, the, the, the problems that the Nile um, is facing up to this time, we will find Hisham al Jah, Farouk Shbida, uh, Abdurrahman Yusuf, so many poets. I'm choosing some lines from certain poets. Uh, that is, I'll start with Hisham al Jah. And in the last decade, Hisham wrote lamenting his deep sense of love and belonging to the Nile and to Egypt and the bond that was shattered by the regime of the, uh, the, the president, uh, the ex-president Hosni Mubarak. Um, I'm not going to explain, but I'm going to read the lines that express that poet's feelings. I am the one who grows gold in your hand, yet the manure you feed me by your hand. I had no happiness, no luxury, nothing but disgust. My dignity, my bit of bread are objects for insult. You hate us? Why weren't you sterile? He's speaking to Egypt, of course. What does it mean? Egypt is the gift of the Nile. If every day I can't find water to drink within a mile. Now, the sense of pride disappeared. The sense of love and belonging to the country is shattered. He even believes that, well, so what? If, you, the Nile, if Egypt is the gift of the Nile, well, I can't find clean water to drink, so what? The elevated classical Arabic of um, Arab, uh, Arab uh, Loret uh, Shawqi, of Hafiz Ibrahim, of Mahmoud Ismail, disappeared. It is now replaced with the colloquial Egyptian Arabic of a young man who finds the prospects for a dignified life in his homeland, Desmo, who cannot realize his dreams, his jobless, unemployment, 
um, is there unemployment and um, no pride? Uh, um, being an Egyptian itself, well, is not the same as it was in the previous times. With another point, we will find Farouk Jouita, and then he uses the Nile as a tool to criticize the uh, economic, cultural, social conditions before the uh, 2011, uh, 2011 revolution. He will deal with the, the themes of nostalgia for the proud old Nile while lamenting the loss of its purity. This is the theme of his poet to a river who has lost its uh, uh, contemnimacy or mutiny or lost its ability to rebel. I'm choosing certain lines from that poem to a, to a river that has lost its uh, or his ability to rebel. Why did you surrender? For ages you suckled us fear. You taught us silence and the impossible. Now you are hiding behind the years. You go back and forth like a faint apparition. Why did you surrender? You were once our pride. You were the gift of the ungenerous time. So many ages broke. Your pride stayed above the time. Did they chain you as they chained us? Did they silence you as they did to us? Why are you afraid? You frightened monarchs in the past. They feared your pride. They feared your rage. King lived, others died. The king of kings you have remained. They can never dethrone you. But did they chain you to destroy inside us the time of pride? And the chains taught us the silence of humiliation. Slaves we became as they enslaved you, O Nile. Let us revive the old spring. With your water, purify my hedges face. Destroy the chains and mine, your chains, sorry, and mine. The worst calamity is a paralyzed age. Let us sow a new age to grow in the ugliness a beautiful face. Since you and I surrender, my home address is humiliated pride, because you are not Egypt and you are not the Nile. Now, this will take me uh, to the last revolution that you have, of course, all seen. That is the 2011 revolution. Uh, poets of the revolution who shared, and some of them, in fact, led demonstrations before and during 2011 revolution, started calling on Egyptians across the country to join the young people, the youth of Egypt, uh, that is of course on the Facebook, uh, who conducted and called for the revolution. So uh, let us call it the first revolution of the Facebook. Uh, Hisham al Jokh that I mentioned before, now is going to document this phase in history of Egypt and in a short poem from which I have chosen these lines he will say, this is a vertical view of Midan al-Tahrir, that is the Liberation Square. Hide all your old poems. Tear all your old notebooks. And today, write poetry for Egypt as much as the old. No silence can impose its fear anymore. Thus, write, peace be upon you, Egypt's Nile and her people. Hopefully, the Egyptian revolutionists that the whole world have seen cleaning Midan al-Tahrir after the revolution and after the success of the revolution. Hopefully they can help in gaining back the Nile of their ancestors and undo the human adverse effects that were inflicted on the river over the past century. The river is the first in Egypt to gain its due respect and pride after the 2011 revolution the poetry uh, that helped generating this revolution can also help gaining a pollution-free Nile. This is a dream, as freedom has always been a dream that can come true, not only for Egyptians, but for all the humans on Earth. Thank you very much.